Hello and good evening CTS 266 section 840 students for the spring 2016 semester at Anne Arundel Community College. This is the CCMP switch course from the Cisco Networking Academy and this evening's video tutorial is going to be a supplement. Uh, we had a number of questions in class on Monday night and so I went ahead and I labbed up uh, sort of the maximum configuration that we could have here with the Gateway Load Balancing Protocol or Cisco's proprietary GLBP. So uh, there were questions regarding how the active virtual forwarders are going to fail over, how do they make that decision, you know, which router do they go to. Uh, and so we're going to take a look uh, at a number of those things and sort of, sort of the subtleties of the gateway load balancing protocol. And as you can see, I have my uh, trusty MacBook here. Uh, who is currently pinging router 4. So we have four routers we're going to be using. And I'll slide this off to the side. Uh, didn't uh, didn't want to do up a Vizio because this is definitely a one-off. And I think once I draw the picture of what we have here, you'll see that uh, it's going to make some sense. So we've got the uh, the typical setup that we've been using sort of throughout the class where all of the routers are fully meshed uh, with each other and so this is sort of our uh, layer two whoops and these are all ether channels here I think they're LACP uh, but again I've already vetted the connectivity so we've got full connectivity so I've got router one we've got router three and router 4 and router 7. So we've got four routers here uh, that all have reachability to each other and this is going to be our GLBP, our Gateway Load Balancing Protocol group. And we're just going to use group 99 because uh, as you can see in the pings over here to the left, uh, even on the switches, right? All, the, all of this is taking place within uh, VLAN 99. And so this is how we would set up the gateway load balancing protocol. And again, you can see here, we're going to have the maximum number of active virtual forwarders that are allowed inside of a GLBP group. So uh, if you wanted to screenshot this, go ahead and do it now, because uh, I'm going to clear the screen here and we won't be coming back to this. But again, all of these routers and the idea would be that you know maybe this one has a serial link out to whoops did not want to grab that let's move this up a little higher here maybe that one's got a serial link maybe that's a metro e circuit uh, that could be a serial link out and maybe that's a, just an, a gig connection out to uh, your provider or, or to you know somewhere else i keep grabbing this here by accident or to uh you know somewhere else outside your network. But again, we're talking about traffic leaving or egressing uh, the network and how we can load balance that traffic as it's exiting the network. So let me go ahead and clear the screen here. All right, uh, so as you can see, we've got full connectivity. I'm gonna change the ping from 44 uh, to the what we're gonna be using as the virtual IP here in a second. Uh, but right now, let's go ahead and jump on the command line here and we want to take a look at a number of things so one of the first things that we talked about was uh, let's go to router one here was what happens uh, and all the interfaces are the same interface fa00 on all four of the routers and they're all cisco 1841s and they're all running 1553 uh, 3xb12 code and so uh, the question was okay well if one of the routers starts up first would it get preempted by another router with a higher IP address and so the IP addresses for everything we have here is basically the router number uh, just double digited so router 1 is dot 11 172 69 or 172 uh, 16 99 11 router 3 is 33 router 4 is 44 router 7 is 77 so let's see let's go ahead and start up glbp here on router one so we're under interface fa00 and we're going to say glbp 99 ip 172.16.99.254 so that is the address uh, that we're going to use 
for the virtual IP address. Then I'll say GLBP 99 and we'll set it to preempt. I'm going to leave uh, the priority at its default. So if I were to say do show GLBP, you can see that the state is in listen because what it's doing right now is it's listening to see is anybody else out there. And after about 10 seconds, what ends up happening is we go from speak to active, listen to active, right? For the active virtual forwarder. So you can see here for forwarder one, we went from listen to active. Uh, and then the state change was we were in the speak state and we moved to active. Uh, I missed it when it was saying, you know, state is listen here. And it said there are no forwarders at that point. Well, now for the GLBP active virtual gateway or the AVG, right? We have an active AVG now. We actually also have forwarder one. Now, remember, there was nobody else out there on the wire competing for the active virtual gateway status or the active virtual forwarder status. So now let's come over here to router seven. Now, router seven's IP is clearly higher. Uh, let's go into global config here and then interface FA00. So the IP address here on uh, router seven is clearly higher than the IP on router one. So let's see, will it preempt because of a higher IP address. So, oops, GLBP 99 IP 172.16, 254. And then we'll say, we'll make sure we get that GL, whoops, GLBP 99 preempt. And let's see what happens here. Do show GLBP. And so you can see that we're in the init state. Do show IP interface brief. This should be up. Yeah, so we're up, up. So we're in the init state right now. Now we're in the speak state. Now for the forwarder, right? So this is a forwarder state change. This is not an active virtual gateway change. So, whoops, sorry about that. So we saw here that a GLBP state change for the group, that's the active virtual gateway change. This, the GLBP6 forward state change, this is for the active virtual forwarder. So for seven, we see that we had a forwarder state change. If I run the command again, we take a look. We are the standby. So this answers the first question. Yes, we can set it up to preempt. And remember, preemption for gateway load balancing protocol GLBP, which is Cisco proprietary, just like HSRP, preemption is disabled by default. So even when we enable preemption, if another router came online with a higher IP address, that router is not going to preempt based on the IP preemption is predicated on the priority, right? It's predicated on the priority. If they came up at the exact same time or within that listen window and the priorities were the same, then it would be a different scenario. So let's take a look at that. Do show run interface FA00. So we've answered the first question. Just because it has a higher IP does not mean it's going to preempt. In fact, it will not preempt with a higher IP. The preemption is predicated on the priority value. So let's go ahead and say no GLBP 99 IP 172.16.99.254 and no GLBP 99 preempt. All right, so we'll pull those commands off. We'll come over here to router 1 and we're going to do the same thing. Do show run in FA00, no GLBP IP, uh, I'm sorry, 99, 99 IP 172.16.99.254, no GLBP 99, preempt. All right, so we've got two clean interfaces right now uh, on both of these routers. So here is what we're going to do. 
So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say GLBP, and this was a question we had as well. Remember with HSRP, uh, and I don't have, do I have something up here? No, that's a Juniper router. That is not going to help me, and that is my Mac. So uh, with HSRP, if I typed in standby IP 192.168.1.254, I didn't have to enter in the group number, right? And it would automatically use group zero. With GLBP, that is not the case. GLBP forces you to put a group number in. Watch what happens if I were to say GLBP IP 172.16.99.254. What's going to happen here? With HSRP, what would happen is we would have HSRP group number zero. With GLBP, we get an error because you have to put the group number in. It will not default to group zero for you like HSRP will do. So let's come back here. We're going to stick with group 99. All right, so I'm going to say group 99, and that's on 7. And then on 1, we're going to do the same thing. GLBP 99 IP 172.16.99.254. And so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit enter super quick, and then I'm going to drop the preempt command in as well on both of them. So GLBP 99 preempt, and then let's come over here to router 7, hit enter, and say GLBP 99 preempt. And now let's see what happens as they both come up and they transition through the different states and they're now listening for each, or I should say they're listening for other GLBP routers who would be participating in the group. And again, this is sort of simulating that these have both come up at the same time. And so take a look here. We get this forward state change for forwarder 1. We get a forward state change for forwarder 2. Excuse me. And here we get a GLBP state change. So what happened? Do show GLBP. Well, this ends up as the active router again. Even though the IP address of router 7 is a higher IP, We've got the same priority values, right? So we'll say do show GLBP. And this router has transitioned to standby. So literally, the first router that starts up, which in this case, we started up router one first, even though it was by, I mean, a number of seconds that it took me to switch screens and enter those commands in, it still puts router 1 as the active router. So let's confirm that. Let's make sure there's not something else going on here. So if I was to go and say no GLBP 99 IP 172.16.99.254, no GLBP preempt, I'm sorry, GLBP 99 preempt, and then we'll do it on router 7. We'll come over here and we'll say no GLBP 99 IP 172.16.99.254. No GLBP 99 preempt. All right, so right now we have no, uh, no, well, let's do a show. Show GLBP, do show GLBP. So we have no gateway load balancing protocol running here. Do show GLBP. And let's watch what happens now if over here, I say right away, GLBP 99 IP 172.16.99.254. And then GLBP 99 preempt. And let's hurry up over here to router 1 and type in GLBP, GLBP 99 IP 172.16.99.254. GLBP 99 preempt. So, <clears throat> excuse me. All right, so let's take a look here and see what happens. So we'll say do show GLBP. You can see where do we get the state change. We get the state change on router 7. Router 7 state showed as active. Here come the active virtual forwarders now. Now that the active virtual gateway status uh, has been established. So take a look at that behavior. Even when I bring them online, 
at virtually the exact same time within that uh, transition through the different states, right? And they're definitely listening and they're getting the hello packets every three seconds with the information. It doesn't seem to make a difference in terms of the higher IP address. What are we seeing? The behavior is clearly the first router that has GLBP activated with that GLBP group number IP command, that is going to be the active virtual gateway. So it doesn't appear that the higher IP is playing a role here. And we can clearly see there's a big difference in the IPs. So we'll do a do show GLBP and here we go. So it, this is active now, but again, the only reason it's active is because I started it first with the GLBP 99 IP command. All right, so that takes care of that question. Now let's go ahead, let's bring the other routers online. So let's go to router three here, go into global config and interface fast ethernet zero zero. And we're gonna say GLBP IP 172.16.99.254. And unlike HSRP, it's not going to default out. So again, fortuitous failure there, right? Reminding us that that gateway load balancing protocol is going to require that we put in uh, the group number every time. And then finally here on router four, let's do the same thing. We'll go into global config interface fast ethernet zero zero. GLBP, I, I'm sorry, almost did it again. IP 172.16.99.254. And let's go ahead and say GLBP 99 preempt. All right, so we've got all four routers are online right now. Do show GLBP. So you can see the state is listen here. And so we'll give it a few more seconds, but take a look at that. We've got uh, three active virtual forwarders. We're going to have four here shortly. Do show... Sorry, do show GLBP brief. All right, so the state is unknown, but that should sort itself out here. Sure, there we go. We just transitioned from listen to active. And let me make some space here between the output. There we go. All right, so we're on router four right now. And let's take a look here at this output. It doesn't hurt to go over this one more time. I know that I've kind of been uh, drilling this into the ground here. Uh, so, but again, uh, it definitely doesn't hurt. And let's see if I can keep this line from completely hosing the output. And there we go. Now let's remember that when we say show gateway load balancing protocol brief or show GLBP brief, this first line of output right here, this is all about the active virtual gateway. This is the status of the active virtual gateway. So when we look at this, what do we see? Well, we see the group number. We see the interface on which GLBP has been enabled. We see the forwarder, right? Now there's a dash here because this is not about the act of virtual forwarder, this first line. These four lines down here are all about the act of virtual forwarder. So what is our priority? Well, our priority on router four is the default priority. Now take a look at the state. We've transitioned to standby. Now remember router one was the standby because only router one and router seven were up. So it looks like when we bring additional routers online, that there is going to be some sort of arbitration that takes place and the priorities are all the same. We haven't touched any of the priorities. And so it looks like what has happened and we did, this is the router we did dead last, that when it comes online, if the IP is higher than the other two routers, router three and router one, remember this is our active virtual gateway here that it does take over that standby status. And so a very simple way to check this would be to see if I take down router four, router three 
should become the standby router. If what I'm telling you is correct, that it's if the priority is equal, that not for the AVG status, but for the standby active virtual gateway, the higher IP is going to take over. And so let's test that out. Uh, let me go ahead and clear the screen here. And there we go. Get back to the command line here. So here's all we're going to do. We're going to say no GLBP, 99 IP, uh, 172, 16, 99, 254. So we're going to remove uh, GLBP from this router. No GLBP, 99, preempt. So we've completely turned off GLBP. Let's say do show GLBP brief. Nothing. Do show GLBP, oops, sorry, GLBP, nothing. So it's not running at all. So let's check on router three and let's see who the standby is. Do show GLBP brief. And take a look there. Look who decided that they were going to be the standby router. Router three. Okay, let's double check this. Is that going to be the case? Are we gonna see preemption of the standby role to the router with the highest IP of the non-AVGs, right? Of the non-active, active virtual gateways. So let's bring router four back online. And I can hustle back here to GLBP address and preempt. And so there we go. So now let's see what happens when we say do show GLBP brief, because before I even hit enter here, what are we expecting to see? Well, the behavior we have seen is with the active virtual gateway election that it will not preempt based off of a higher IP. But with the active virtual gateway standby election, it is preempting based off a higher IP. So when I hit enter here, what we should see happen is that router four is once again the standby router and take a look there it is and it just went from listen to active on the forwarder there so uh there we go right so that answers another question as to who's going to become the standby router right well it's going to be the router if all the priorities are the same there is going to be a preemption of the standby router from another standby if the one we brought online like we did here last has a higher IP address. All right, so again, that answers another question that we had regarding how does this work. So now let's talk about the gateway load balancing protocol. Uh, and specifically, let's talk about what happens uh, when you've got the active virtual forwarders. So where is the active virtual forwarder going to fail over to uh, if it has an opportunity? So let's see what happens here. Is it going to go to the router? Again, all of the, and we're talking about the active virtual forwarders now. So if I say do show GLBP, we get down here to where we've got the four forwarders, right? There are four forwarders. Now let's take a look at the weighting for all of these because we're not talking priority. When we talk about the active virtual gateway and the standby, the active and the standby, then we're talking priority. That's going to have an impact and an effect. When we're talking about the active virtual forwarders, now we're going to have to start to talk about the weighting, right? What is it weighted? And as you can see here, the weighting for all of these, four to one, two, and then this is our forwarder here, and the weighting is 100 right there. So for all four of these, the weighting is 100, so it's equal. So how do we know, and let me clear the screen here, how do we know if router one uh, has an issue of some kind uh, that 
where is it going to go? Where is the active virtual forwarder going to fail over to? So in this case, all of the weightings are equal. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to interface loopback uh, 172. And I'm going to say IP address, and this is router 1. We'll say 1.1.1.1, and we'll make it a slash 32. We'll throw a no shut in there, even though we don't need to, because it's going to be up all the time. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to say track... 172, oh, actually, can I go to 172? Here we can. All right, so we'll say track 172 interface loopback 172 line protocol. So what I'm going to do now is let's go back into interface. Oops, sorry, interface FA00. So I'm basically sort of like, this is pretty contrived, right? You probably wouldn't do this, but uh, Robert brought this up in class, and I thought this was an excellent point. Uh, that if you did want to do it in a contrived way to basically force uh, the active virtual forwarder off of a router, off of a GLBP group member, you could track a just a dummy loopback interface and decrement when we shut that down. So I'm going to say GLBP 99 waiting, uh, and the waiting's in 100, but here's what we're going to say. We're going to say that the lower... Uh, is going to be 50, and the upper is going to be 90, right? And so remember, what we're saying here is that if the weighting on this router drops below 50, he is going to give up his active virtual forwarder status. And another uh, GLBP group member is going to assume responsibility for those active virtual forwarders. And if it goes above 90, right? So then like say the interface goes down, we go below 50, he gives up his active virtual forwarder status. 10 minutes later, the interface comes back up, we go above 90, he gets his active virtual forwarder status back. And so we're basically just defining some boundaries here uh, to again, do sort of a contrived um, failover. So GLBP 99 uh, waiting in the track. We did 172 and we're going to decrement and I'm going to say that we'll decrement by uh, 75 because again the waiting right now uh, is 100. So there we go. So theoretically if I were to go into interface loopback 172 and say shut we should see there's the track state. It picks it up immediately right? The line protocol has gone down. Loopback 172 is down. So now what we should see uh, within the timeout window, which we had up here a little earlier, so delay of 30 seconds. So in 30 seconds, what we should see, if I say do show GLBP brief, is that interface has gone down. We are active right now for active virtual forwarder two, and there it goes. So we've got, I love the syslog messages here, right? We've got the facility, the severity, and then the mnemonic, and then here's a message, fast Ethan at group 99. We have gone from active to listen. So we have now forfeited, and I say we, I'm sorry, router one, we have now forfeited um, our active virtual forwarder status because we've dropped below the threshold that we've deemed uh, to be acceptable. So now when I say do show GLBP brief, let's take a look here. Let's look at that active virtual forwarder status and get the pen back here. Uh, and we were AVF2. Now, where did that go? over to router 77, which just happens to be the router with the highest IP. Now, what you might be asking yourself is, well, wait a second, Travis, that's also the current active virtual gateway. So how do we know that it's not just going there because it goes to the current active virtual gateway first and not the router that just happens to have the highest IP. Okay, let's check that out. So let's bring every, oops, sorry, let's clear the screen. Let's bring everything back to 100%, right? So here's where we're gonna say no shut. We're gonna bring that loopback interface up. 
there we go it goes from down to up state change and we'll give it a couple seconds here he's going to pull back router one will pull back ownership you can see right now he's basically just listening and we are active virtual forwarder two and router 77 that's router seven has it and so we'll allow it to bring itself back online and sort of take responsibility again for answering uh, to ARP requests that are going to be uh, headed, or I shouldn't say ARP requests, uh, for um, default gateway activity. And there we go. We went from listen to active. So let's check that out. Do show GLBP brief. And there we go. So for active virtual forwarder two, we are now back in the game and it's active. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to router three and I'm going to say GLBP 99 priority 200. Now we have preemption set across the board and take a look at what's going to happen here. We're going to have a state change and we're going to have a new active virtual gateway because I've set the priority to 200. Now remember a minute ago, who was the active virtual gateway? The AVG was router 7. The standby was router 44, or I should say router 4, uh, with the IP of 44. Now, let's see how this plays out. So I've gone from speak to active. So we'll say do show GLBP brief and take a look at the behavior of what happened here because there's two significant changes that have taken place. The first is we increase the priority to 200 on router three. So router three is now the active virtual gateway. But take a look at who competed for the standby and won over 44 who was literally seconds ago the standby router exactly router seven because out of the three remaining non-active virtual gateway routers because now router three is the active virtual gateway we have three routers here that are not they are competing for the standby status how did it get selected highest ip so now let's go ahead and this gets interesting now let's go back to router one we're going to down that interface the loopback interface remember router seven is not the avg so let's see who picks up the responsibility here for router number one's active virtual forwarder which is avf2 and again, we've got about a 30-second uh, window here for this to go down. But isn't that interesting that the standby router, when we changed the priority, not only did it preemptively change the AVG, it also changed the standby. So it literally reshuffled who was the primary, or I should say the active, and then it shuffled who was the standby. So now we've gone to the listen state. Let's say do show GLBP brief and who picks up active virtual forwarder two. Yep, the router with the highest IP. So that is how the AVF will fail over. It's again with the weighting equal across the board, it's going to fail to the router with the highest IP address. So now that begs the question, well, let's change the weighting. All right, let's get in here to uh, router four. We haven't done much here on router four. Let's go into interface FA00. And we'll say uh, GLBP 99 weighting. Now I can weight it from one to 254. What if I weight it to 150? So let's see what happens now when I say do show GLBP. And again, we're on router four here. Let's come down and we are right here. So we are forwarder four, right? We're active virtual forwarder four. 
and the weighting that we have is 150. Now, when you would typically change the weighting uh, is when you want to prefer uh, one router over the other in terms of the way the traffic is being distributed. So maybe this router has that gig circuit that we were, uh, the gig E uh, circuit that we were talking about, and all of the other routers have T1s, possibly, right? Just an example. But we've weighted, we're weighting the active virtual forwarder here higher. So let's see now. Let's go back to router one and let's say no shut. Well, actually, first, let's say do show GLBP brief. Has anything changed? No. The active virtual forwarder two, which belongs to router one, is being supported by router seven. So no shut. Let's bring loopback 172 back into action. All right, here he comes. So we bring 172 comes back into action. We've got to give it just a little bit of time here uh, to sort out the active virtual forwarder assignment. It's going to come back. AVF2 will come back under the ownership of router 1, and it will be active under router 1. And there it is right there. We've gone from, you can see right here, we get that syslog message. So group 99 avf2 we've gone from listen to active so we're back in the game do show glbp glbp brief and here we are now if i say do show glbp does router one see that router four who is forwarder four has a higher weighting Absolutely, router one sees that. So the weighting here on router three, or I'm sorry, forwarder three, uh, is, and which happens to be router three, is weighting 100. Router one's weighting is 100. Router seven's, is that seven? Yeah, router seven's weighting is 100. But router four has a weighting of 150. Was, will this impact the selection for? who the AVF goes to. Well, let's find out. Let's shut down this poor loop back here, 172, uh, that's just taken a beating here in this video. And we're gonna shut them down now. And let's cruise over here to router four. And let's say, do show GLBP brief. And you can see right now, AVF2, we've gotta wait that 30 second, um, Got to wait the 30 second delay, right, for the active virtual forwarder before there's a preemption. And if four takes over, would we see a maybe a syslog message here about the and take a look at that. So we get two messages real quickly here. Do show, I'm sorry, I should be keyed up there. Do show GLBP brief. And what happened? It went from listen to active, but then it flipped from active to listen. And who ended up with active virtual forwarder two, router seven. So even with a higher weighting, router seven with the highest IP address still took over the active virtual forwarder for router one. And so that kind of answers the question. It doesn't appear that the weighting plays a significant role in who will assume responsibility for an AVF when there is a failure on one of the routers. And so let's go ahead and we'll do one last check here to make sure, because how can we sort of do a... Uh, I don't know if they call it like the double blind or whatever, but what we're gonna do here is we're gonna bring it back up, the loopback interface. We're gonna allow the active virtual forwarder to transition back over there. And let's see here, it should go to uh, the listen state. I'm just checking on router four here because what we should see is we should see right here when that 30 second timeout comes up, we're gonna see that there's gonna be a transition uh, here, and this is going to say 172, 16, 99, uh, 11, and it should be right now. There it is. Okay, great. 
All right, so it's back to 11. So let's do this. Uh, do show run int fa00. The weighting's 150. I'm even going to go further. I'm going to set it to 225, right? So we're going to jack the weighting up uh, on router 4. And actually, give me a second here. Let me think this through. So no, we don't want to do this. Let's say we'll pull the weighting from here. And we'll put the weighting. Oops. Let's put the weighting over on... We're going to put this on router 3. So let's come over here to router 3. And the reason I'm doing this is because the expectation is it's going to fail over to router 4. Because we're going to down router 7. So there we go. So I've set the GLBP weighting here to 225. Let's see. Does router 1 see the fact that that has changed? Do show GLBP. Let's cruise down here. Router 3, weighting 225. Okay. So that's a pretty high weighting definitely higher than these others at 100. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go into, uh, we're going to come on to router 7 here. We're going to go into interface FA00 and we're going to say shut. So now we are basically going to shut router 7 down from participating in the GLBP group. So do show GLBP. Let's do a brief on that. Sorry about that. Right, so you can see that Router 7's active virtual forwarder went to who? Well, we've got actually, it went, so I'm sorry, I highlighted the wrong line. I was looking at the wrong thing. So who did it go to? Local, local. It went to Router 4. So as soon as we shut down Router 7, Router 4 picks up the active virtual forwarder. So even with Router 3's weighting being extremely high, if I come back over here, if I shut down the loopback interface and force the active virtual forwarder somewhere, where is it going to go? Is it going to go to the router with the highest weighting or is it going to go to the router with the highest IP in the group? So this is why on Router 3, we jacked up the weighting to 225. Because we want to see, is it going to pick router 3, which is the IP.33, or is it going to pick the highest IP that has the default weighting of 100 still and shift over to router 4 and take a look. Forwarder 2, the active virtual forwarder, has transitioned to the active state on router 4. So it does not pick the router with the highest weighting picks the router with the highest IP. Okay, so let's go ahead. We'll bring the interfaces back up. We've got one last thing we want to take a look at here. Come on to router 7 and we'll say no shut. So we're going to bring everybody back online. And what we're going to do now is we are going to pull in. And where is it at there? There we go. We're going to pull in the MacBook here. And the reason we're going to do this is we want to see when the MacBook ARPs out uh, for its default gateway, is it going to be given a different MAC address each time? Because right now, the, uh, the oh, and you know what? The, uh, yeah, so the default uh, load balancing algorithm is weighted right now. I'm sorry, not wait, I'm sorry, it's round robin. The default load balancing uh, mechanism is round robin. Uh, and so what we should see uh, is each time I ARP out, I'm going to clear my ARP cache and then force it to ARP out again. And let's see what happens. So let's say uh, do show GLBP brief. Are we back to 100% here? All right, we are. So I've got routers one, three, and four, and then this is router 70, uh, router seven, IP 77. Okay, so let's go ahead, and here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and type in, we're gonna say debug IP ARP. Whoops, sorry, debug ARP. So we're gonna debug ARP. And the debugs are an incredible source of information. So debug ARP. Now, Quick word of caution, I would not do this in a production environment. 
especially if it's a large production environment. I would avoid that like the plague. Okay, so you can see we've got ARP received from router one. And 11. I'm not sure where that IP address is at. All right, so let's pull the MacBook back up here. Let's do a control C. Uh, and if I were to say if config dash A, let's take a look at the MAC address here for the MacBook. It ends in Delta 918, right? And so that's the interface that we are using, uh, the 172.16.99.10. And so let's see what happens uh, if I were to say, uh, what is it, ARP dash A. So that's what I've got right now. Uh, you can see that I've got the default gateway here and it was active virtual forwarder too. So let's clear the ARP cache, which I think is dash A, I'm sorry, dash, uh, dash D dash N, is it? Or is it just dash D? I think it's dash D. Or sudo ARP dash D. And ABC, one, two, three. And I'm missing... I think it is dash D dash A. Dash D dash A. Deleted. Okay. So it shows that those have been deleted. So if I were to say uh, show, I shouldn't say show ARP, just ARP dash A. Transitioning between the command lines sometimes can be difficult. So right now the ARP cache only shows that entry there for the MacBook. Let me shut down. Oh, I can't shut the Wi-Fi interface down. We'll lose the remote desktop. So again, that's all I see, right? I have no entries in here for that 172 network. So now let's say ping, uh, we'll say 200, 200, 200 .10. Now that doesn't exist, but take a look on router one as to what just happened. Received an ARP request, and that's the MacBook, Delta 918, with a destination going to 172.16.99.254. Well, who's our active virtual forwarder? Well, the AVF is router 7. Show, I'm sorry, the AVG. Uh, so show GLBP brief. And actually, it's router, I'm sorry, router 3. So router 3 is the active virtual gateway. And that's right, because we pushed up the priority. So if I come over here to router 3... And this was what I was looking for here. So you can see ARP request, or I should say ARP request received. Let me kill this real quick. So we're going to say you all. So this is the output right here that we're interested in. Because who is responding to the ARP requests? It's going to be the active virtual gateway that's going to respond to the ARP requests. So what do we get right here? IP ARP received a request from source 172.16.99.10. That is definitely the MAC address of the MacBook. And the destination is the default gateway. And so what does router 3 send back? Router 3 says, I'm going to send a reply from the source 172.16.99.254 and look at the MAC address it gives. 6304. So let's take a look at that. So you can clearly see this was the only router to send a reply back because it is the active virtual gateway. None of the a debug output for the other routers show that it is sending, and again, this is these are sends to 9911, uh, right? You can see it received, okay, but it's not sending anything to the MacBook. Router 4, same thing. It's These are receiving requests here. Nothing being sent from Router 4. Let's take a look at Router 7. Uh, router 7, same thing. The requests are being received. So who is AVG? Four. If I say uh, do show where we are, let's say show GLBP brief, show GLBP, and we want to do brief. Sorry about that. 
So we got sent to 6304, router four. So it was router four who the MacBook is using as its default gateway. Well, if that's the case, if I come over here and say control C and say ARP-A, what MAC address should we be seeing? And it looks like it's changed and it went over to 63001 while, unfortunately, while I was talking. All right, so it looks like it was using 63001. So let's try that a little quicker now. So let's clear the ARP cache. Let's force it to have to ARP out again. And let's see real time what router three is gonna show. So we say debug ARP. We pull the MacBook back up and we'll say sudo dash D dash A and sorry about that, sudo arp dash d dash a, deleted all those entries, arp dash a. That's it, we've got that one entry. Let's say ping 100, 100, 100, 100, or 110, just ping something. And so here comes the entry and look at who it gets kicked off to, 6302. So when I say control C and I say arp dash a, who do we see? And there we caught it, I didn't apologize, I was talking too long before this. So it picks up 63.2. So let's quickly do this. Let's clear the ARP cache. And this was Leonard's question. So I clear the ARP cache. I say ARP-A. And then we're going to ping out to a bogus address again. And I'll say .11. And who does it give it? So it went from 2, take a look at that, 63.02 to 63.03. Control C. Let's pull this back up. ARP-A. Yep, 63.03 is now the active virtual forwarder MAC address that we've been given. So let's clear the, because again, remember, we're doing round robin here. So let's go ahead and clear this out again. Pseudo ARP-D-A, we deleted all the entries, ARP-A. We've got nothing here. Let's do a bogus ping out to that address. And what should we get back? Take a look at that. It went from 6302 to 6303 to 6304. And let's go ahead and make sure that we wrap all the way around here. ARP-A, we're using active virtual forwarder. The MAC ends in four. Let's blow this away again. Let's say ARP-A, nothing there. Let's ping a bogus address. And we should get one. And take a look at that right there. So we've gone from two to three to four to one. So we've worked our way all the way around and let's make sure now, so see if you can predict what's gonna, or who is going to get uh, the next round robin assignment here. And again, this Leonard's question was, well, what if the same host, what if it's the same host and it comes online later, does it go right back to the same router or is it going to be put back in the rotation and just basically, you know, whoever ARPs out and who's ever next in line to have their MAC address provided to the client, is it gonna get a new one? So let's see, does it go back to two? So we'll clear the ARP cache, ARP-A, nothing there. Bogus ping attempt here. And we should pick up, there it is, 6302. Just as we thought, so ARP-A, oh, we didn't wanna delete that, but yeah, it, you can see it right there. So 6302, so we have literally gone in a, I don't even want to say a virtual round robin, we have gone in round robin um, format with the same host, with the same host IP. So again, that's going to be the behavior of the gateway load balancing protocol. If your host, for whatever reason, is not sending traffic and that ARP entry out of your ARP cache times out on the host, and it has to ARP out again, it is going to get the active virtual forwarder MAC address that is next in the rotation based on what? Based on the load balancing algorithm, right? So we're doing round robin, and this was a great example of round robin. So actually, one last thing uh, that I wanted to talk about, and that is the, uh, the load balancing option where you can lock the IP onto a host. So we'll kill debugging here, go into global config, and if I go into interface fast ethernet zero zero, or actually uh, would have been more appropriate, we can do uh, client caching. So I can cache 
GLBP is it out here? No, it's not out here. I think it's under the interface. Face, interface FA00 GLPP99. It's client caching. So, and this is actually pretty cool. So I can create a client cache and I could track up to 2,000 clients. So I'll say 100, right? And then you can actually run a command uh, that'll show you. Uh, I believe it showed GLBP client cache, or and we'll take a look at it in a second here. So let's go back to the MacBook. Let's flush out everything from the ARP table. Let's ping a bogus address. Who does it get? It should get three, and bingo, it gets three. So now let's say show GLBP, and is it cli and it's client cache, and let's see if that shows. Yeah, there we go. So take a look at that. So if you set the client cache up, it'll actually, sort of like, you know, stateful DHCP, is it will keep track of the clients. But now here's the interesting thing. Look at how it breaks it down for you by forwarder. So what happens then, and you guys probably know what I'm getting ready to do here, we blow the ARP cache away on the client. We tell the client, yeah, ping that bogus address. You know what's going to happen. Round robin, boom, from three to four, show GLBP client cache. Look at that. There's been two updates, and he drops and he moves down here. And it's been 7.164 seconds. All right, guys. That has got to have answered all the questions that you had. We even took a look at the, uh, the client cache that you could set up so that you could see uh, which clients or how many clients are on which active virtual forwarders. All right, guys, hopefully this is going to kind of really solidify, pull together, fill any gaps in that we had with GLBP. And we did a pretty exhaustive look here at not only the active virtual gateway election process and the order of operations and how that's going to play out. We looked at the active virtual forwarders. We saw that the waiting is irrelevant and that it's going to jump to the next highest IP of a, of a member in that GLBP group. Uh, then we saw that round robin, even with the same client, it's going to have to ARP out again, and round robin's not going to say, oh, I know the client, and so I'm going to give you the same active virtual forwarder. There's an option for that, but that's not what it's going to do by default. Round robin's going to say, yep, here's the next Mac, the virtual Mac in the rotation. And then the client loses that ARP entry for the default gateway. He's got to do it again. Yep, here's the next virtual MAC in the rotation. And it's just going to go around and around and around and around. So he could end up with a different virtual MAC every time he ARPs out. If you've got enough clients and they're ARPing out constantly, it'll be, you know, it gets more and more random the larger your environment gets with hosts in a round-robin format. And then finally, we saw that you can create a quick client cache here that's kind of like, you know, show IP DHCP bindings, it's going to show me which GLBP clients, I'm sorry, yeah, well, I guess which GLBP clients are using which GLBP active virtual forwarders. And I shouldn't say GLBP clients, but you know what I mean, the in-hosts, which hosts are using which active virtual forwarders. All right, guys, that's it. I will see you on Monday night. Enjoy the rest of your evening.